Hello, Randy Rain here, and I could remember back in the early 80s going to this store called Toys by Roy. In there, there was this little gondola. Not that kind of gondola, this kind of gondola. It was a little model gondola that went from one wall to another inside there, and you could control it. And this thing was for sale, but much like most toys at Toys by Roy, it was way too expensive. So what did I do? Well, I went home and made one. Made one out of some popsicle sticks and whatnot. No pictures exist of it, but if you look at this old mini roller coaster that I made, you can see part of it here in the background. And now 35 years later, I'm into 3D modeling and 3D printing, and I decide to make another one. And I just use a little gear motor to move it back and forth, and I use this double pull, double throw switch that has an off section to control it back and forth. And then a few Halloweens ago, I was performing a seance show at this escape room in downtown Dallas. And I had rigged up the whole room all, with all these mechanical things, things that would tap you on the shoulder or touch you on the leg and all kinds of crazy stuff. And one of the things I had was a wall of very fine thread that would drape over people. And the way you controlled it back and forth was with this switch that I pulled off of my gondola. And then eventually I just took it all down because this was happening. The string was just rotting away. So for this video, I am restoring something of my own. I'm going to make this gondola work again indoors this time, and it's going to be a smart gondola. Let me show you. So I'm going to use this remote control circuit that comes with this little key fob. The receiver is here. Look up RX480. So this is the transmitter. It comes with this uh, little plastic stuff here that I've been dying to pull off. Which is kind of hard because it's underneath this thing. to do both sides. There we go. Oh yeah. So it's a four channel, but I'm only going to use the top two channels. So the pins on this thing, you're going to have your positive and ground here to power it. You're going to have D0, D1, 2, 3, and then this is the antenna. So connect the wire for an antenna to this. And then when you push down the A button, it's going to make this one go to positive. When you let up, it's going to go to negative or nothing. And these are just going high and low, depending on pushing these. For the switching of the motor back and forth, I found these schematics online. Now, I've been doing it with PNP transistors and NPN transistors. Uh, this one does it with just NPN transistors. It does it where two of them are allowing a negative electricity go from the emitter to the collector, and two of them allow positive electricity go from the collector to the emitter. These schematics said some transistor I didn't know of, so I just tried it with these TIP110 MOSFETs here, and it works great. It's perfect. This is a much better circuit than the way I was doing it. So I think this is the way I'm going to do it from now on. This is plenty to handle the motor that I'm going to be using. Then I'm going to use this infrared sensor hooked to the motor pulley. And it's going to count how many times it spins around. This thing is called the IRS-01A. Now to control it, I'm going to use this pickaxe chip, my favorite little chips to use. This is just an 8-pin, and I have a 14-pin socket, but maybe I'll want to upgrade this sometime, and so I'll go to a bigger chip. That's why I'm using the 14-pin, or it's because it's all I have. Okay, well, I had a voltage regulator go out and put 12 volts onto everything, and it killed that thing. That no longer works. So I started over, but I kept 
my MOSFET motor control here. I just redid this all nice so that it's working good. But then I found out this voltage regulator was not enough to power this, this, and this. So then I added another voltage regulator just for this one. Then I was still having problems. Then I realized the power supply I was using didn't have enough power in it to actually handle all of this. So then I found another power supply that was stronger and finally I've got this thing working. Here's the little pickaxe chip with its voltage regulator. It controls it. It also controls the little IR sensor. Here is the new remote receiver. It has its own voltage regulator. The reason I have 12 volts in the first place, they all go to here to turn the motor. So now that the electricity's worked out, I was able to model out my pieces. I've actually used these motors before and I already had the model for all the mounting for it. So then I printed out the pulley for the motor and then here I made it so it's divided out into eight sections with raised and high so it would make it easier for me to paint the black and white. It sets in there like that. The IR sensor slots down into here. It will go into there. Wire will come through this little slot here. Then all this has to go into here which I'll figure out a nice way of doing that when I'm ready. Then there's a lid that I put on, snaps into place, and then the power is going to be coming out of this hole going to that. And then I have it set up that you can use straps that I will strap this motor in, and then this is mounted to the wall. For the other end, I printed out this mount and this pulley, and it was able to have a bearing put inside. It slides into there. Then I have this stainless steel rod that slides in. I'll just use a little bit of CA glue to keep the rod in place. Just because this plastic can yellow, I'm going to go ahead and use some white enamel paint and paint the white parts. White parts are going to be the raised section. And now for flat matte black. That looks good. I guess I can go ahead and mount the motor in there. Like that. Printed in are these little pieces here. I just realized I didn't make a spot for the motor wires to go through. Okay, go ahead and solder the power onto this thing.
probably doesn't need it, but I'm going to go ahead and hook this little wire up for an antenna. Now I'm going to hot glue all this. Okay, so here's the pickaxe editor. We'll go through the software real quick. Now this first section here, this is just to declare the pins on the chip if they're inputs or outputs. That's just one way to do it. There's other ways to do it so you can change it on the fly. This section, this is how you declare variables. This is variables here that I've made. I read data. This is data in the memory that I'm reading out here. This is to see if it's been calibrated or not. Then I set the variables. And then you go down to the main loop here. And then you see there's work mode. That's one of the variables. There's two work modes. There's zero and one. Work mode zero is where you calibrate the thing. And work mode one is the normal operations. If you need to calibrate, it's going to be in work mode zero. And it's going to go sub move momentarily. So what that does is you have to hold the button down to make it move and you, there's no limit to it so you push this button here it's going to make this pin go high and turn the motor one way and if you're pushing to make it go out it's going to start counting and if you get to a certain point you know you're going to be calibrating so it changes. So if you're just trying to home in back and forth at the home base, it's not going to do it. You have to go out so far. So the other one just makes it go back. It's just going to turn on the other pin here. And it also resets the count. So it keeps resetting it back to one. So once you finally find home where you want it to start at, it's the move count is going to be one. You push the button to make it go out using this one. It goes out. When you go all the way out, and you'll pass this number here. When you get past this number here, you can stop. And then as soon as you push this button, it's going to go back that same amount. So you've now calibrated. And then it writes it into memory. Now that it's calibrated, you're in work mode 1. So it's going to be doing this right here. And now the buttons are latching. You have to push it once to turn it on, push again to turn it off. And this is basically what all this code does right here. Make sure you don't go over the limit. But it's also, if you look at the main loop, it's also doing this go to sensor count. So that's down here. This is counting how many times the motor goes around. And if it goes past the count that you calibrated, it's going to stop it. Then there's one more thing here called the go sub click check. Oh, what that is is if you need to recalibrate it, you can hit that one button 10 times and it will come down here and it'll just pretty much start over everything and you'll go all the way back up to here to the set variables and it'll allow you to recalibrate the thing. You can see it in action if I simulate it here and push play. At this point, if I push this, you can see this one goes high. That makes this one go over here go high. So if I push that button, it makes that pin go high. And it makes this pin go high to turn the motor on. This pin does this one. And the sensor's on this pin right here. And you can see I've got some of the variables set up. This is the move count. So if I was to push this button it turns the motor on and this would make the sensor be doing this and as you can see it's counting up count just count it up to five do it a couple more times and now it's up to seven but once you get to a certain spot which i have it set at 15 so it's up to 13 now so the motor would be turning we're at we're at to 15 we'll do it one more time so that should be 17. Okay, so now that it's at 17, you would turn off. So say there is how far it goes. So now you that's how far the, you want the thing to travel. So now you'd push this button, and that turns this one on. You can let up the button. It's going to stay on. You see nothing. It's now, the length is now set to 17. And so now, as the motor turns... 
and it turns this pin off and on with the sensor. You can see it's now counting down. See, we're almost we're at six now. At three. And when it gets to one, it should turn off just like that. So now it's been calibrated and you're in the normal mode here. So if you push this one, and you don't have to hold it down, you just have to push it. It turns on and this will go out 17. But you can stop it by pushing it again. It goes off. And then you could also push this one and it'll go back. And it's going to go until it stops. So now I'm going to program this chip, test it in the real world, and then I'll probably come back and change this value to make it higher so I have more room to work with. So here's the chip hooked up to USB with some power. So to program, all we have to do is go up here to program, click this, and there it goes. Downloading program. And downloading data. So now I just pop this chip into place. Put this sensor here. I guess it needs to go from here in front of the robot to up there. All right, it's all strung up. It's now time to plug it in and calibrate it. Okay, it's now plugged in. So we want to go back to home base. You just have to you have to hold it down. Okay, we'll say right there. So now we take it to the other side.
Okay, it should have been counting that whole time. So when I push the other button, it should go back that many times it counted. Here we go. beautiful. Alright, so now all I have to do is just push the B button. Pushing the A button doesn't do anything unless I push it 10 times and then it resets so I can calibrate it again. But to make it go, I can only go that way so I push the B button. And as we travel along at this blinding rate of speed, I remind you to keep all hands and feet inside the gondola, please. We are coming up on the robots. If we stop here, we're looking at the Robotron R2, currently not working. This robot here is currently not working either, and I forget the name of it. But I find it to be one of the most ugliest robots there ever was. And here he has the famous Steve the Butler robot. Stop automatically right there. Now we go back. Well, there it is, everyone, my gondola restored. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a like. If you want to see more stuff like this, of course, subscribe. I'd like to thank these people on the screen. These are patrons. Couldn't do it without them. You might want to go check the Patreon link out. There's some cool perks. But until the next video, there was the gondola. But let's say I needed to calibrate it again. It needs to be in the home position. And I hit the A button. It doesn't do anything. You have to hit it ten times. One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. So now I can, I have to hold the button down to move it. And so now I can recalibrate it. So maybe I don't want it to go that far up. Maybe I want that to be zero. And then I do it again.